Greetings friends. Was having my early morning pipe this morning and uh, wanted to jump on and share some information with you all that I've, I've learned recently. Um, I've set my pipe down for the moment because I'm probably going to do a lot of talking. Uh, smoking my Diplomat and in it is some Penzance. But uh, I was really uh, surprised yesterday when I went into Boswell's and the shop was completely empty. Uh, you know, International Pipe Smoking Day is promoted, in my opinion, pretty heavily on YouTube and on the internet. I looked it up and there were several uh, references to it on if I googled in, you know, International Pipe Smoking Day. And um, so when I came home, um, I did a little more research. So for those of you that uh, may not know as, as me, um, International Pipe Smoking Day was originated in something called the Smokers Forum in the UK in 2008. And since then, it's been adopted by uh, the Comité International des Pipe Clubs, which I think is an organization that's located in France. Uh, this year, on uh, yesterday, the 20th of 2014, was the seventh annual uh, International Pipe Smokers Day. And in the U.S., the uh, affiliate member of Comité International is the United Pipe Clubs of America. And with, you know, that kind of pedigree, it, it sort of, it still surprises me that uh, the Boswells uh, really had no clue. In fact, when I said, where is everybody? It's the International Pipe Smokers Day. Uh, you know, they kind of laughed it off, at least Dan did, and said every day in here is International Pipe Smokers Day. So, in a, in a certain sense, um, that tells me that they're, they kind of isolate themselves, you know. All, their entire world is about Boswell's and Boswell's pipes and Boswell's tobacco, as it should be. They're a business, a retailer, and they're in the business to sell Boswell's pipes and Boswell's tobaccos. And uh, I guess they... Uh, don't really uh, consider or give much uh, credence to competition or competitors. But uh, anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about in this uh, video, because it was empty and Albert and I were the only ones in there, JM came out after finishing, I guess, his, his work for the day <clears throat> and sat down with us for about a good hour and a half. And, uh, you know, talked about quite a few things, but we did talk a lot about pipes and about pipe smoking. And as a new pipe smoker, uh, I really found a lot of what he said to be uh, very interesting and helpful to me as a, as a new pipe smoker. And I want to share some of his thoughts with you today. Uh, as a blender of tobacco, he was telling us that fire is the enemy of tobacco or heat. Uh, all tobaccos burn at a different temperature. And so uh, he was saying, which sort of flies in the face of what we do here on YouTube, at least it's been my experience, of trying all these different blends. Um, I told him in the short time that I've been smoking a pipe since September of last year, I, I've, I've literally probably tried 30 or 40 or more different blends of tobacco in that ever ending, never ending search, you know, for the blend that just, you know, knocks me off my feet and, and I go, this is the one. And he said, as long as I continue to try so many different blends, I'll never find it. I'll continually be in more or less a state of flux. Uh, he said that you need to settle on one tobacco and smoke it consistently 
for an extended period of time to acquire the um, palate for that particular tobacco because all tobacco Tobaccos burn differently, and heat is the enemy of tobacco. And the example he gave is if you were in the kitchen and you just made a lasagna and you had the temperature set at 350 and it had been baking for several hours and you pull it out of the oven, are you going to stick a fork immediately as it comes out of the oven and taste that lasagna? And the answer is, of course not. You're going to let it cool down and give the heat a chance to... Uh, di uh, dissipate from the from the lasagna so you can actually taste the flavor of the lasagna and not just taste the heat uh, from the baking in the oven and I just that just made so much sense to me and it because it had never been explained so logically I I'd, I'd never thought of it myself and so his recommendation to any pipe smoker, new or old, and, and he said he shared this information with uh, people that have smiked, smiked, smoked pipes for over 40 years and, ha and has completely changed their, their way of smoking a pipe and their enjoyment of tobacco because he said the reason we smoke a pipe, the reason we smoke tobacco is for the enjoyment and if you're not enjoying it, what's the point? So. He said uh, what he does, the way he smokes a pipe, and the way he recommends, is that you light the tobacco on the initial light, and you smoke it until you feel the bowl get warm. And that means that the, the, that the tobacco in the bowl is getting hot. And he said, if you can put the pipe up to your cheek, and if you can feel the heat, from the bowl on your cheek it's time to set it down and what you do is you tamp it lightly you set it down and let it cool and then when you go to relight it you stir that top ash just a little bit and dump it out and then you relight your pipe and he said you get your best taste you get the most taste on each relight and then you do the same thing. You smoke it until you feel the bowl getting hot, and then you set it down. Otherwise, you're just smoking all of that. You're just drawing all of that hot smoke into your mouth. And that's where uh, most people uh, get their tongue bite from. So uh, just a lot of, uh, to me, kind of basic, uh, you know, class 101 pipe smoking knowledge that uh, I'd not come across before uh, yesterday and I wanted to again like I said pass that information along and, and share it with you all um, he he said that in a year he may only try two or three different blends throughout the course of a year he always has his go-to that he smokes on a regular daily basis and uh, so you know for myself Albert and I were talking I, I you know from the sampling and the sharing and you know all of that that we do here on YouTube I know I've got easily 30 different blends of tobacco uh, down in my basement and I, I keep everything I've got like a little chest of drawers down there with jars of tobacco and and baggies of tobacco and that's where I keep my pipes and my pipe supplies and everything. So <clears throat> if you're interested in developing your palate so you can actually taste the flavor of the smoke that you're, uh, the tobacco that you're smoking, uh, again, his recommendation is you find one blend that you want to stick with for several weeks and only smoke that blend. And when you smoke it, only smoke it until the bowl gets warm and then put it down, let it cool and relight it and go through that process again. He said you should never ever smoke a tobacco to the bottom of the bowl because as the tobacco smokes, as we all know, the moisture uh, <clears throat> accumulates at the bottom of the bowl, what we call dottle, 
and uh, he, he said you should always leave a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of unsmoked tobacco in the bottom of the bowl purely for taste purely for enjoyment if you're not smoking for taste if you're not smoking for enjoyment again his theory is what's the point and I could not agree more so uh, I hope some of this information you find helpful I certainly did and uh, it's gonna uh, uh, it's caused me to rethink uh, my approach to the pipe and I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently in the near future and uh, I'll let you know how it works out for me. So thanks for watching. <clears throat> I know this has been a longer one for me, but uh, hopefully you've gotten some good information. Till we meet again, friends, happy trails. Oh, didn't turn off. <laughs>